Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 14, we are going to be converting rational numbers to decimals using long division. So, can all rational numbers be written as a decimal? Hmm. Using the division button on your calculator, explore various portions of integers 1 through 11. Record your fraction representation and their corresponding decimal representations in the space below. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 1 by every integer. I'm not going to do 1 times 1, obviously that is just 1. If I divide 1 by 2, 1, divide by 2, enter, I get 1.5. If I divide 1 by 3, I'm going to get divide 3, enter. I'm going to get a decimal point 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, repeating forever and ever and ever. So I'm going to stop right there. Okay. Now I'm going to do 1 divided by 4. 1 divide 4, enter. Point 0.25. 1 divided by 5. 1 divide 5, enter. Two, two tenths, one divided by six, and so on and so on. I just want to show something to you once we're finished. That is going to be 1.66666 repeating. What the calculator did here was rounded up because it's like, okay, I'm going to stop now. I will be here forever if I don't round. It rounded here as well. It just doesn't show it as a four because something less than five gets rounded. And we have 1 divided by 7. 1 divided by 7 equals 1.1428571429. 1 8th. 1 divided by 8. I just said the answer one tenth, one tenth, one tenth, and one over eleven. One divided by eleven is point oh nine oh nine oh nine. That's interesting. Point oh nine oh nine, and that will repeat. Okay, so there's a representation of one divided by two all the way up through two and including one divided by eleven. So, what two types of decimals do we see? Well, 0.5 ended, 0.3 is repeating forever and ever and ever, 0.25 ended, 0.2 ended, 1.6 repeating forever, this ended eventually at 9, 1.25, 1 repeating forever, 0.1 repeating forever, 0.1 and stopping, and 0.09 repeating forever. So two types of decimals, terminating or decimals that end, terminating, Decimals that come to an end and repeating. Those are the two types of like decimals we see. Repeating decimals and non-repeating are terminating decimals. Okay. So let's put our calculator away for a minute. Let's maximize this so I get some colors. Example two, decimal representation of rational numbers. In the chart below, organize the fractions and their corresponding decimal representation listed in example one according to their type of decimal. Okay, so I'm gonna put terminating here. And over here, non-terminating, meaning never ending. So the first one was a half equal 0.5, and then one quarter equal 0.25 or 25, 0.25 or 25 hundredths. One fifth 
equals 0.2, 1 8 equals 0.10, and 8 equals 0.125, okay, finally 1 10 equals 0.10. Those were the terminating. Now the non-terminating, I'll use green because they're going to go forever and ever. One third equals 0.3333. One sixth equals point six 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 six, repeating forever and ever. One seventh. It looks like it terminated. These numbers are all different, but actually it keeps going, and it is going to be zero point one four two eight five seven one four two nine. Now, if I go out further, we could do this in the spreadsheet. That 9 was actually 8 right here because the calculator found it. And it's going to keep going 7, 4, and on and on and on. Okay. 1 ninth equals 0 0.1111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111111
9 times 8 is 72, so I'm going to have to drop one. 8 times 8 is 64. 4, 10 minus 4 is 6. 7 times 8 is 56. 60 minus 56, I should show my 60 minus 56 equals 4. Bring down a 0. 8 goes into 40. 5 times. So my answer is going to be, don't forget that negative sign. Negative zero point eight seven five. Okay, so you got that. So calculators are not necessary to find decimal values of a fraction. Okay, this one is three divided by sixteen, which means this. Obviously, it won't go in. So I'm going to. Do this and then 16 times 2 is 32, so 2 won't work. So I'll go back to 1. 16 subtract 4 with 1. 10 minus 6, 2 minus 1. 16 into 140. Uh, let's try 8. 6 times 8 is 48. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. Subtract 4. 10 minus 8 is 2. 3 minus 2 is 1. Bring down a 0. 16 goes into 127 times. 7 times 6 is 42. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 4 is 11. Subtract. Borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8. Bring down the 0. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 1 is 5, plus that 3 that was carried is 8. And finally, we get a remainder of 0. So, 3 sixteenths is 0 0.1875, or 1,875 ten thousandths. Example four. Converting rational numbers to decimals using long division. Use long division to find the decimal representation of one third. Okay. So we're taking one and we're dividing it by three. Three won't go into one, so I always do the point zero and put a zero here. Three goes into ten three times. So three times three is nine. Okay, subtract, borrow, 10 minus 9 is 1, I'm at 10 again, 3 times 3 is 9, 10 minus 9 is 1, bring down a 0, 3 times 3 is 9, 10 minus 9 is 1, and I'm going to stop there because if you notice that whenever we get a 10 and subtract 9, we're getting 10 again, subtract 9, 10, subtract 9, 10. This is going to keep going and going and going. So I'm going to stop it right there. So the answer is 0 0.3 repeating. One third. Okay. Now let's get this out of the way. So we can read next question. So this is exercise two. Calculate the decimal values of the fraction below using long division. Express your answer using bars over the shortest sequence of repeating digits. And what that means is if I come back up to here, my answer is not 0 0.333 with a bar over it at the end. My answer would actually be 0 0.3. Since all threes repeat, we can just have the first one. So do that with problems A, B, C, and D. And I will pause the video. Or you should pause the video, I should say. And when you're ready. Okay, so hopefully you've done these four problems. If you had needed help, someone in your group could have helped you. Check your answers with someone in your group to see if you got the same answer, if you got something different. Investigate as to why. So this is 4 divided by 9. I'm going to ignore the negative for now. Nine. Four inside. Four divided by nine. Nine will not go into four. 
So I set it up. Nine times three is 27. Nine times four is 36. Nine times five is 45. Five is too many star. Nine times four is 36. 40 minus 36 is four. Well, I already see this is repeating and it's going to repeat. Nine times four is 36. Remainder four. Nine times four is 36. Remainder four. There's no need to continue don't forget the negative sign. The answer is negative 0 0.4 bar. Do not repeat. Okay, B. Negative 1 divided by 11. I already did this with calculator. I'll do it here now. 11. 1 divided by 11. Ignore the negative until we are finished. 11 will not go into 1. So I add a 0. 11 will not go into 10, so I have a 0, 0.0. I need another 0. 9 times 11 is 99, and that's going to give me a 1. Bring down a 0. 11 will not go into 10, so I need a 0. Bring down another one. 11 goes into 100 nine times. Okay. 9 times 11 is 99. Subtract 1, 0, bring down a 0. You're allowed 1, 0 at a time. 11 will not go into 10, so I put a 0. Bring another 0 down. 11 goes into 109 times. 99, you get the idea. We're repeating, repeating, repeating. We only need to repeat what is, we need to write what is repeating one time. 09, 09, 09. So my answer is, don't forget the negative. Negative zero point zero nine. Repeating. Okay. C one divided by seven. Okay, let's do my initial setup. Seven won't go into one, so I made it set one point zero. Now it looks like ten. The decimal there is zero times seven will not go into one, so it's zero. Seven will go into ten once. One times seven is seven. Three, bring down a zero. Seven times four, 28. Subtract, two, zero. Seven times three is 21, which is too big, so I've got to use a two. Seven times two is 14. 20 minus 14 is six. 7 times 8 is 56. 40. 7 times 5 is 35. 50. 7 times 7 is 49. 10. 7 times 1 is 7. 30. Now look what's happening. I always look for patterns. That's what math is all about. You add a 1, a 4, a 2, an 8, a 5, a 7. When I went to 1, notice I'm getting 10, 7, 30 again. And that's when I started with 10, 7, 30. So we know that this is going to happen again. So this is my first repeat. So the 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 is the repeated portion. So my answer is 0 0.1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. And that all will repeat if I continue. Okay. If you got that, that was fantastic. That was true. Okay. D. Ignore the negative. 5 divided by 6. 5 won't go, so I set up my initial. 7 times 6 is 42. 8 times 6 is 48. That's the best I can do. 50 minus 48 is 20. 6 times 3 is 18. 20. And now we see we're going to get 18, 20, 18, 20, 18, 20. 6 times 3. So the 3 is repeating. The 8 is not. Put a negative in front. And this is our answer. Okay. Example 5. Okay, this was a ton of writing, so I'm going to try to put it up here. Read it, see if you can understand. So it says, how do we determine, right here, 
How do we determine whether the decimal representation of a quotient of two integers with the divisor not equal to zero will terminate or repeat? How do we know? It says in the division algorithm, if the remainder is zero, then the algorithm terminates. And we all know that when we're dividing, when we get a zero denominator, we divide and subtract, we get a zero, no remainder, we are done. So the decimal end is resulting in a terminating decimal. If the value of the remainder is not zero, then it is limited to a whole number between one, two, three, all the way out to D minus one, where D is the divisor. So let me go back to an example to explain that. Okay, so in this problem here, our divisor was 7. So D equals 7. And they said D minus 1. So they said they're saying 7 minus 1 or 6. Okay. So if it's going to repeat, it's going to be 1 less than the number in the divisor. So look at this repeat. How many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what it's saying is if it did not repeat by here, one less than our divisor, and it's not going to Okay, so let's see that again. If the value of the rem remainder is not zero, then it is limited to a whole number, one, two, three, all the way up to the D minus one, where D is the divisor. This means that the value of the remainder must repeat within those many steps. Okay? For example, given a divisor of nine, the non-zero remaining remainders are limited to whole numbers one through eight. So the remainder must repeat within eight steps. When the remainder repeats, the calculation that follows will also repeat in a cyclical pattern, causing the repeating decimal. So let's take a look. That's really interesting. My divisor is 3. Okay, I'm dividing by 3. So that had to repeat by the second step, which it did. Okay. This is a 9. That needed to repeat by the 8th step. Well, it repeated on the second step. First, actually. Yeah, second. This one is an 11, so it had to repeat by the 10th, but it repeated in the second. And so on and so on. But this is a perfect example. Number seven. That number kept changing, 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 but then all of a sudden, if I kept going, this is what it would be. We could stick, sit here forever and repeat over and over. And this is six digits. And I divided by 7. So D is 7. D minus 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. Okay? That's really cool. Example 6. Using rational numbers, conversions, and problem solving. Eric and four of his friends are taking a trip across New York State through it. They decide to split the cost totals equally. So they're on I-9. If the total cost of tolls is eight dollars, how much will each person have to pay? So that's eight dollars divided by the number of people. Eric and four of his friends. So be careful. Don't just see four and write it down. Eric and four of his friends, and they're all going to split. That is five people. So it's eight fifths of a fare per person. Okay. So I'm going to take eight. To divide it by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. Subtract, get 3. Make that a 0. Bring down the 0. Point 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Subtract, I have a remainder of 0. I am done. But money is always out two decimal places. So make that 0. And each person is going to pay $1.60. B. Just before leaving on the trip, two of Eric's friends have family emergency and cannot go. Now what is each person going to have to pay? So two of these guys aren't going anymore, so now it's Eric and two others. So that's how many? Three. Okay. Five minus three. Five minus two. Three. So it's eight dollars divided by three people. So 3 will go into 8 two times. 
So that's six. Subtract two, bring down the zero. Six times three is 18. Subtract two, zero. Six times three is 18. And it is repeating. 266. This is money. So if I repeat that, remember that repeats. We're talking about money here, so let's keep it real. Alright, so two dollars and sixty-six cents repeating. Okay, so if if there are three people and one is paying two sixty-six and a second is paying two sixty-six and a third Six times three is eighteen. Six times three is eighteen plus one is nineteen. Two times two is four times two is eight plus one is nine. Is that right? Nine ninety eight. Two sixty six times three. Oh, no, it's not nine and seven. Okay. Two, four, six plus one is seven. All right. So if each pays 266 and 798, uh, they're lacking two cents. So one of these guys will have to pony up a penny or two. All right. So that's where we have to come into reality and we have to round. Okay. And that's the end of the lesson. Hope for your problems.